um, and this is kind of hardcore, but it's a, 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 essentially a chemical decapitation. And what I mean by that is that things can be going on to you and happening to you, and you're still in a place. You're still there. You don't, um, you know, in, in the pre hosses it's a wonderful, wonderful medicine for, uh, but, but on the veterinarian side, they designed it so that they're large animals. They could operate or do large procedures without the animal laying down. So that kind of gives you a, a status. You know, you're able to cut into an equine or, or bovine uh, case and the, the, the animal stays stay standing. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a taste of, of, of how it works or, or, or what the result of it is. Welcome to another episode of the Mind Medicine Podcast. My name is Brian McCartney, founder and chief vulnerability officer of Mission 38, a nonprofit in memory of my brother, United States Marine Corps, Captain Matthew Brewer, who died by suicide two years ago. Um, again, our mission is twofold. First part is challenging the stigma associated with asking for help. If you don't ask for help, you can't get it. And the second part of our mission is to provide tools to veterans that increase brain health. And so I'm very excited to have my good friend, um, the man, the myth, Mike Lichtig on the podcast today. Um, Mike is uh, has had an incredible past helping a bunch of people and now um, is the, the co-founder of Liberty IV. So Mike, super stoked to have you today. Um, you've helped me a lot. You've helped a lot of people and it's going to be an awesome combo. Glad to be here, man. Thanks for having us. Of course, man. Um, so why don't we start with, why don't we start with, with your past and I guess to kind of tee you up on kind of what Mike does. Um, when I was going through, through my depression, I talked to um, one of our good mutual friends, Clint Bruce. Clint's been on the podcast a couple of times, but the first person he sent me to was Mike. He said, you know, go get your, go get your blood work done, um, you know, find if there's any nutrients that you're missing, right? And, and Mike will do everything he can to take care of you. So, um, and, and you did just that. I had a bunch of questions on ketamine and, you know, the antidepressants I was taking, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, you know, you, you were there 24, 24 seven. So I appreciate you, man. And um, I know I'm just one of many people who you've helped. Absolutely. Glad, glad to be able to do it. Yeah. So, uh, after, a, about a 20 year career that, uh, came, you know, right out of college in, in the finance world and some interesting assignments throughout that, um, had, had kind of hit a, a, a point in my life where it was, a a, a, a wall of, of not, not satisfied with what I was doing, not enjoying what I was doing. So, uh, took a change, took a, took a leap of faith and, went back into school and, and uh, my wife and I both actually uh, pipelined uh, from from our our careers into the emergency medical world um, straight up just EMS right up through um, EMT paramedic and and uh, spent uh, right at 10 years now as a career in uh, the the emergency pre-hospital emergency stuff so your 911 your uh, flight medicine we, we both have uh, uh, pursued our flight certifications and hold national board certifications in flight medicine. And so that, that got us to this point when all of a sudden the world was hit by the big C-19 COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and COVID was a real eye opener for what, uh, not only the, the needs, but the, the absolute, um, the brokenness of the system um, that was out there. As, uh, as paramedics, uh, both my wife and I, we were w both working in a, a large, very busy level one um, trauma emergency center here in Dallas. And as that, uh, that whole pandemic progressed, we saw more and more of this, um, anything wrong with your cough, fever, anything where you normally call your PCP, they were just, you know, uh, throwing up the barriers and, 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 and not doing any office visits and just pipelining everybody into the ER. So we saw this incredible, uh, um, need, you know, there's a hundred percent chance that you're going to run into sick people at the ER. So if you've got a 20% uh, question in your head, whether you're really sick, which a lot of these folks do right. and aren't really sick, just need, just need a little bit of guidance or a little bit of help from their, their physician. Um, the ER is not the place to go. And so that was, that was really the genesis of, of the, the Liberty IV venture was how can we get this broken system where, where everybody's having to come in with this, this terrible exposure, terrible cost um, for, for very minor adjustments, and how can we get that out into the community? Um, so we started looking and, and saw, you know, the med spa world had kind of taken over this IV therapy 
concept and the pricing um, at the med spas wasn't a whole lot better than than what you'd pay in an ER. It was ridiculous. So right. that was the birth of the model where we said we got to get this out there in an affordable way and we got to communicate this uh, availability or this this extra bandwidth that we're going to create um, for the the the. Uh, Emergency medical, but not a, a an acute emergency. You know, you need some something done quickly. Urgent care does a good job with that, but again, it's uh, they're kind of uh, if, if if you want to look at it, kind of they're the JV of the of the ERs, and they do a, a fantastic job and offer great services. But again, it's still not the right place for just that minor um, adjustment of fluids, fluid resuscitation, and so that was the birth of, of Liberty IV. Right. Yeah, and I think you know, going to Liberty, I was not expecting. Because, you know, I think a part of the reason why the system is so broken and why no one knows about these therapies that we're going to talk about today is that, like, your doctor is never going to... The first thing your doctor is going to put you on, because this happened to me, right, is I went into my doctor, right, and he was like, you have, you know, you have ADHD, here's Adderall, you have anxiety, here's a, here's a benzodiazepine, right? So it's like, and, like, that, that's, a, that's a horrible concoction, you know, and you trust them because they're a doctor, well, right. you're, exa- you're exactly right, and 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 let me just just uh, preface this by saying uh, I know many wonderful, wonderful medical Correct. doctors yeah. out there that yeah. just really do dynamite work. But um, as we get critical about it, you know, our Western medicine model has become so big pharma driven, and protocol: if this, yes, this, no, this, check this box. This is what you take. If that doesn't work, call me in thirty days. Let's try something else. And the creativity is just is 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 null. It's just not there. Right. Um, and that's a real frustrating thing that I had seen on on, on a personal side. You know, um, I, I I wear the the badge proudly as a 21 year uh, sober alcoholic in recovery. Congrats, um, brother. Appreciate it. This past August 19th, the uh, eclipse 21 years. So so I know of the 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 struggles of going and seeing somebody asking for help and 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 they offer the help and they give you the help but it's a, a real generic here let's follow this protocol and generally it ends up you know some sort of combination like you mentioned of you know let's treat the the ADHD with the Adderall let's get the uh, the Ritalin all, all those types of drugs let's uh, let's attack the uh, depression with an SSRI let's um, combat sleep problems with some sort of benzodiazepine or or uh, more powerful sleep medicine than just a you know a, a melatonin supplement or something like that. So you, it's it's a it's an ugly circle that we see that um, is meant to be and is very useful in in its its intended purpose a very short term yeah, treatment right right inside the a box season of life not a not a not a full time beautifully said yeah, season of life exactly but yeah. it ends up you know six seven eight years and in my case you know I looked at you know seventeen eighteen years on the same SSRI and. Uh, um, you know, w- what all has that done to me? Is it, you know, you, you, you have the, the aging process that goes along with it too, but, you know, weight gain, um, loss of libido, the, the energy drive, the, there's just so many things that, that that robs you of, and it robs you in such small little incremental portions that uh, it's not something that, that just screams, you know, crisis. Right. So a lot of people just, you know, fall into that groove, and that's life, yeah. and it doesn't have to be. 100%, man. Yeah, and I think, you know, um I think you made a great point, and I always want to em- emphasize on this podcast: like, like we are not giving you medical advice. Absolutely. Mike and I are not are not MDs. We are not licensed to to you know give you medical advice. We are just talking about you know our experiences, um, experiences of the people that we've been able to help, and you know I think what we'll talk, but but also what we'll talk about today is, um, and again, like like I don't think. People don't go into becoming a doctor for the the purpose of getting money, right? There's better ways to make money. Like they want, they generally want to help people. Um, And, but, you know, the way that they're taught is that, like you said, like there's a process and you're look, you're taught to look at different symptoms and a cluster of symptoms. And then you treat those symptoms um, with different medications, right? And, and I think a lot of these big pharma drugs, and we can get into that, we'll get into that conversation a little bit later, but it's like these drugs create other symptoms. So then you have to treat that symptoms, which create more symptoms. The next thing you know, like we, I've said this, pod, this statistic many times on this podcast, but you know, one in every three veterans are prescribed 10 or more pharmaceutical drugs, right? So they have these, you know, not even the, the, um, not even the, the psychological and the personality um, kind of, I guess, injuries or, or disorders, illness, whatever you want to call it, symptoms, but they have the physical as well. And then you start throwing opiates at the problem. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's horrible, man. Um, and I know, I know you've done a lot of work with um, the Adaptive Training Foundation. 
um, David Vibora. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, good. yeah. I mean, doing life changing work, and I know um, they lean on you to help with their athletes. You know, a lot of them. Um, people will cut just to give an overview on Adaptive Training Foundation. You know, they help. Um, veterans and athletes, uh, people who have had traumatic injuries, right, whether it be amputees or paraplegics, um, brain injuries, right, they, they take them in, um, they, they, they um, help them become stronger, both mentally and physically, right, they, they um, kind of eliminate those, those limiting mindsets, right, and they, I think the, the coolest part about ATF is the tribe and the community that they've built. So kind of walk us through your process helping those athletes. Absolutely, and and um, you know, hats off to the guys at ATF and 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 all the the mentors that have have pushed them in the direction they've gone, and and everything that's going on up there is absolutely God's work. Um, the the couple of things that really strike me about the the ATF group, and and uh, we'll bounce more generally, but they they have you know huge huge uh, uh, sets of applications and have to unfortunately at this point you know can only treat so many, right. and they really focus on a forward looking so. The, the athlete that that, uh, uh, that has, has accepted the injury understands where they are and is forward-looking and, and looking to make change. And then I think if I put one word around uh, what David Vibora and his group stand for is holistic. It's a whole body fix. There's not... Um, there's not one aspect. There's not a medicine. There's not a certain workout. There's not um, a, a, a mindset. It's all of this incorporated into to, uh, a program of holistic approach to, to uh, existence. And I think that's so important today in medicine. And one of the things that gets missed in Western medicine that uh, the Eastern, uh, you know, the, the traditional Eastern medicine is way out in front of us on is this holistic approach, that there is this mind-body connection that has to happen. It's not a pharmaceutical connection. It's a, it's a, it's a, a combination of all of the nutrition. It's, it's breathing. It's uh, meditation. It's medicines. It's physical uh, exertion. Community. Community, right. exerting, accepting stress as something that's achievable and not something to be run from, um, and learning how to, to uh, you know, react uh, uh, and, and predict things in your life so that you don't become uh, slave to some of these anxieties and stressors that that cause you know more and more, like you alluded to a few minutes ago. It, it's it's a chain of different symptoms that come from some of these other problems, and so the holistic approach that uh, those guys have been able to carve out um, is just an absolute gift to be able to work with them. So specifically, what we see with these guys, um, you know. The, the, the combat veteran has a very um, interesting um, physiological or, or lab makeup that's somewhat predictable. And I think we underestimate what any time whatsoever uh, downrange or, or, or even just prepping for downrange without a lot of deployments, but certainly those who, who deploy and, and spent time um, downrange uh, over in war situations, the amount of physiological stress that that body is in during that time and the sustainability of that, how long they have to be in that mindset, really ages, if you're going to look at a physiological uh, uh, perspective, really ages these, these individuals um, much more than I think we, we give credit to her. So and let's, and, let's, and let's break that down a little bit. Sure. And I'll, you know, I think I'll give my, kind of my take and then you can add to it. But you know, in terms of like the physiological, right, like the type of stress these people are on, like I think you know, what makes it so unique, I think, I think it starts even before you get to the military, right? A lot of people who join the military, a lot of people who join, you know, a lot of fighters, a lot of, um, you know, professional athletes, like a lot of the times they come from nothing or, and they're escaping something. Um, and the military or boxing is their escape, right? Whether they got in trouble or come from a broken home, whatever it might be, right? So they don't really have a choice. So, so you have that, you have that trauma that comes from from your childhood, right? So, so let, again, let's say you're from, you know, a, um, a rural area, or let's say, um, so the for the professional athletes and for for the, uh, for college football players, they're the most sexually abused um, group of males, right. right? So they're and that's why they're so angry, right? And that's why they that's why they want to have this masculine kind of thing because they're they that was taken th from them when they were a child, right? They, they were taken advantage of, which makes them feel like less of a man, right? So then they, they put on this kind of mask um, and never address that trauma. So you, are, you have that piece. And then you go in and then you're training, right? And you have, you're doing, um, you're doing uh, 
you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? You have blast exposure from the range. Um, and then you go to war, right? And you see your best friend get blown up, right? And then you get back from, and then you leave, you leave the military, you leave your tribe, you leave your brothers, you leave your day-to-day -day operation where everything is, is drawn out for you and then you lose your identity, right? And then, and then all these things. So then now you have all this trauma that you leave the military with and now you have to try to figure out how to deal with. You, have, you don't have a sense of purpose and identity or community anymore, and you're trying to do all that stuff with a, with a, with a brain that's injured. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, that's... that's, that's and, and I think more so today uh, than, than in the past with, with some of our other campaigns that we have to really dial into is how quickly the transition happens. Gosh, you know, with the, you know, keeping politics out of it, but the way that this last Afghanistan issue settled, it, it, you know, it, it shocked even, even civilians that, that have no clue on how the military works from the inside out. Um, how quickly that came to an end. So you've got these guys that, you know, six, seven, eight months prior to their, their indoctrination or, or their, or their re-indoctrination, if you will, into civilian life are, are, are kicking doors and, and in firefights over there. Um, and, and in a very short period of time, now they're transitioned back out to where the same guy who was, uh, you know, head down with, a, with an RPG going over the top of them and watching their friends injured and all the things you mentioned are now sitting in a carpool line and we, uh, we, we, you know, raise eyebrows when we say, why does that guy get excited when he gets cut off or see something that's not right and, and wants, to, wants to correct it? I mean, how would you not? You can't, I mean, you, you, to the training and all that. So all of that, I think you, you, you're, you're, you're right on point that um, all of those stressors that you mentioned, and then I think the time, we, we do a very poor job, I think, today with today's military man on, on de-escalating. And the, the medical proof that I would, would, would put up there is, it's amazing how many times we will run simple blood labs on a uh, on a young man or woman that comes in to see us, and we'll we'll test for you know testosterone in these guys that are 27, 28, 29 years old, and you see levels that are more consistent with somebody 50, 60 years old. You know, yeah. sub 300s, yeah. which you know needs to to be addressed in a, in a replacement. So you, you you can have all the physical, the mental, um, and then when you throw the spiritual brokenness, and then and then throw a hormonal breakdown on top of that that the VA misses, and yep. and they miss it because again we're going back to that Western medicine. Um, the, the, the protocol says at this age, that becomes an issue. And so if, if you know, you're going through that protocol, is, is this patient 35 or older? No. Okay. Then TRT is not, not a primary consideration for them. Yeah. And it's just a miss. It's just an oops. It's a medical oops. That's, uh, right. yeah. You know, I think, I think, I think this is a good time to talk about the kind of, um, military system right now. Right. And again, like, like I think the VA as a system is broken. But there's a there's amazing people like within the VA. I think like people don't join the VA to help veterans to to ruin their lives, right? Like they're they're generally trying to help these people, but the system is fucked. And because of that, like like you know, there's people like you and I that kind of need to step in and and um, approach it differently. But and also, you know, like you said, when you get out of so um, I'll talk about my brother as as, sure. as a perfect example of this, right? So um, Matt got out, didn't have health insurance because the military had it for him, right? So now he's like, well, well, well what do I do now? Right? Like, how do I get health insurance, right? And then you go to the VA and you're waiting in a line for six hours and then they go and they say, here's your symptoms, here's an antidepressant. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to take that, right? My brother, my brother was very against medicine. He was like, for better or for worse, was like, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, but then, he, you know, you went and he got his testosterone taken. So, I mean, Matt did, you know, special operations, heavy artillery. They're feeding those guys steroids um, and they're feeding them, you know, things that, that like Adderall, right? And these things that speed you up, right? And, and make you, because you, we want our warriors to be the most optimized that they can be, right? Like they're protecting us. So like we want them, like we want them to be as strong as they can, as fast as they can, as, as dialed in as they can, right? Like these guys are special operators. They're the most elite people in the world and they will do anything in order to be high, to, to increase their performance as we want them to be, right? Like we don't want these guys to be like average shows. Like yeah, we, we need them to be superheroes. Well, and let me back that up just a little bit more because it's a great point. Um, you know, let, let's go back over into the, the the combat environment, the combat arena, and the something happens, you know, platoons out, there's an ambush, a couple guys get hurt, they get pulled away. Um, maybe there's a fatality, maybe not, but anyway, uh, bad things happen. Uh, 
the, the, the explosions, et cetera, that, that can happen around these guys, if unless, I mean, there's, it's, it's kind of the, the old parent that says, if I don't see, you know, bone or blood, you know, go on, keep playing. Right. Um, and that's very much the mentality because these guys don't want to leave their buddies over there. I mean, that's the last thing when something like that happens um, inside this, this unit of brotherhood. The last thing you want to do is say, oh, boss, you know, I, I was real close to that explosion today. And I got it. My head hurts. I, I got a concussion. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I, yeah, it yeah, knocked right, me out. And they're, right. they're like saying, no, it didn't knock me out. I'm fine because they don't want to get sent to doc. They don't want to get sent, transitioned back over into the, the medical side and back up into Germany, you know, the, the trips back home because they feel like they're leaving their their, their buddies behind. And and so that's, that is that is what it is. But what where, where that, that comes back and bites us is now this guy transitions out. Okay, he transitions out and he's had several concussions that are legit, boom, boom. I mean, deep, 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 deep tissue uh, injuries. Um, Potentially, and you know, tens to, to I've heard who, hundreds. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, right, from right. the minor to the major, yeah, tons. But when, 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 you, when he out processes, his, his DD-214 is going to list all his medical. Well, he toughed it out. Guess what's not on his medical now? Yep. So All five years later, years, yeah. five months later, whatever, he goes back to the VA. Those guys pull the source documents. They say, hey, "You didn't have this. You didn't report this to us when you were our guy. Now it's uh, you know happened outside in the civilian world, and so it creates a, a whole mess." Much like the the insurance model of of civilian and that's the, the way we all know is broken, where you know the the, the premiums are high and the uh, the nobody's eager to pay for much, and you know it's deny deny until you fight fight fight. Right. Um, a very similar end result, just a little bit different mechanism of how it happens to them, and and that's a real problem well, th that we see. I think people don't understand that that the VA is literally um, a healthcare and insurance system. Right, like a lot of a lot of civilians don't understand that, like, like VA is big pharma. It is it is insurance. It is healthcare. Absolutely right. Like, and people don't understand. Like, that is that is the veterans and the military's healthcare system. So it's just as broken as the rest of it. People don't necessarily understand that, but you're doing that with with people who, again, who have experienced injuries, aren't experiencing illness on a on a heightened scale because of all the things that we just that we just talked about. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think, Absolutely. and and again, and we're not picking on the military. We're not picking on no, the no, media, no. like you said earlier. Yeah, you right. know, Bamsey in San Antonio, Walter Reed, fantastic, fantastic people. Just you know, do, it's doing the system. Doing, it's, it's a, a system, system that needs exactly. to be changed. It's yeah, system. it's not the people. It's the system. The system needs to be changed, and that's kind of what we're trying to prove concept of. And I moderated a panel um, for the American Legion, their new Be the One program, which is stigma reduction in the military. I moderated a panel between Dr. Ann McKee, who's the world's uh, leading researcher on on CTE, right, and, mm -hmm. and and brain injuries and blast exposure, as well as Jason Redman, who's a SEAL who um, you know got shot multiple times, bone up, right, yeah. um, face, total facial reconstruction, et cetera, um, and that's exactly what we talked about, right? Like one, in order to to begin to solve the problem, we need to do have these kind of conversations, right? Veterans need to understand that they're not crazy and that they have an injury to their brain. Absolutely. And all those times where you were toughening it out for your country, which we commend you for, but all those times were injuries to your brain, right? And so you're not crazy, you have an injury to your brain, and like we'll prove later in this in this episode um, for the Brain Optimization Lab, like you can begin to solve these injuries and illness, you can begin to, like any illness, right? You know, you might not be able to cure it immediately, but you can get better over time. Um, Absolutely, that's so well said. And you know, I, I like to, to compare it to, you know, the, 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 the TBI or the concussion, um, the, the, the uh, number of concussions over time. It's, it's, it's the, the same guy, the 35 year old guy who's playing softball and he's got a shoulder and it's, it's a badge of honor that he's got a rotator cuff that he's having to milk because he was a, a, he was throwing flame as a high schooler and he it's could throw me. the benders and literally me. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that's a, that's a sign of, uh, you know, machismo and, you know, he was an athlete, he was a jock and someday, you know, he's going to get that shoulder worked on. Right. It is absolutely no different to that brain. Right. It is a repetitive motion. It is a repetitive mechanism injury that's happened time and time and time and it's been stigmatized for so long we don't want to talk about it and now that it's starting to come out we're starting to get some 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 leverage on that and, i think and dude imagine imagine if we could switch that that conversation where it's like you know my the fact that i tore my acl and like was a good call like high school athlete like imagine if we could have this conversation like yeah dude i've been dealing with like you know gnarly anxiety and depression because like i got an injury in my brain right like absolutely and not, it's not necessarily a badge of honor right like like of course it's 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 not a good thing but like as we've talked about so many times, in order to change the stigma, we have to change the way we talk about asking for help. And because these people 
who are hard people and special operators, right? And, and Marines, right? People who are eating blasts all day, like they're hard people who like doing hard things. And there's nothing harder or more uncomfortable than going through mental health challenges and asking for help, right? And that's how we have to talk about it. You should do this because it's hard and because exactly. you're a hard person, right? Yeah, and, I think, and I think, you know, um, we'll transition to the Brain Optimization Lab after this point, but um, as we talked to Jason and Dr. McKee, we talked about, you know, how do we begin to solve this issue? And like you said, like right now, there's not a system um, or there's not a good system in the military that can, like, like these guys, unless you pull them out of the battlefield, they are not gonna leave because that's just the type of men and women that they are. Right, they will not leave unless you force them out of the game, similar to a football player. So we have to be able to test concussions and blast exposure during during war and during training if we want to be able to protect these guys for longevity. Because also, like we want to have going back to our earlier point about you know having the most optimized, most dangerous warriors. They're not dangerous or optimized if they have an injury to their brain. So they have like they are they cannot be the protectors that they were called to be if they have a brain that isn't functioning the way that it's supposed to. Absolutely. And, and even even once back into the, the civilian world, it takes the courage and the, the leadership of guys like uh, Clint Bruce. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people look up to him. And when he says, hey, guys, you know, you're broken. Let me, let me, let, give me your ear for a few minutes. Let me tell you what's going on. Leadership yeah. like that, that's, that's, that's military respected, um, you know, at that at that level, and there are guys all over the nation that are that are like, but Clint's, you know, kind of our yeah, right. godfather, if you will. And I think stuff that is huge for him. To, you know, those type people who are saying, "Hey, guys, this is okay. This is this right. is what this is what we're working on. This is what we want to work on." Right. So, so that type of of advocacy at that at that really highly respected level is just paramount in, in getting to success. And I think the I think the last gap that needs to be filled in terms of leadership for military members leaving is that they need to be the, instead of saying, hey, it's okay to be broken, they need to be the first ones to say, hey, I'm broken. I'm broken. Or, or I was broken, yeah. right? Because in order, I think that's why people trust me so much is because I, every single week on this, on this podcast, I talk about how I've been broken or a new way that I am broken, right? So then people are like, hey, I'm broken too, mm -hmm. right? I don't say, hey, it's okay to be broken. Like I'm just as fucked up as the next person, right? Like I've been, I know what it's like to to want to to, to die, right? Yeah. And it's the worst feeling in the world. But it, unless you can relate to people on that, then they're not going to necessarily listen to you. So, and uh, I think a really cool way that that, that I've heard that said uh, uh, is um, not trusting a guy that won't show you his scars mm -hmm. or that says he's not broken, right? Because he's either a liar or a fool, yeah. and both are, are dangerous to be around. Right. And, and we know who that uh, quote comes from. Yeah. Um, but uh, th it's the same concept, yeah. Right. E right. E show me somebody that's not broken, and th the, there's only one person that ever walked the face of the earth who could say that, and he was probably the most broken yeah. because of our stupidity, right. yeah. man's Jesus, stupidity, yeah, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ himself, yeah, absolutely. Exactly, the only man to ever, the, the only man that was ever good was Jesus, and so the rest of us, you know, just have to try our best to, to be more more like him. More like so, him. Yeah. So let's so let's talk about the Brain Optimization Lab. So I guess to give a little bit of preference to the listeners, um, you know, we have our new program for Mission Thirty Eight, the Brain Optimization Lab. We have a virtual email campaign that veterans can opt into. To um, that'll be coming out in twenty twenty four. Um, we're creating content for it right now, but um, kind of educating veterans on how to increase their brain health and helping them to provide tools that they can implement into their own life, um, both financially, you know, um, different protocols, et cetera. But we're also gonna have an in-person brain optimization lab here at Mission 38 HQ in Dallas, where we'll be proving concepts about how we go about solving the problem. So how it'll work, we'll have a veteran, um, likely who's high risk and who's suffering to come in, um, feel the kind of healing energy that we have here. We'll get a brutal 38 minute workout in, prove to them that they can do hard things. They're gonna to talk to a mental performance coach, um, Dr. Jess Garza. We'll take them through what y'all provided Liberty IV, get them you know, completely optimized again, and then we'll you know, run through breath work, contrast therapy, et cetera, and then they won't leave until um, they feel safe. So let's kind of talk about what Liberty IV will be bringing to the table in terms of this holistic approach we were talking about. And I think we start with kind of overall how you go about treating patients and then we'll kind of walk into a couple of questions I have about specific modalities that you use. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the 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 the, the premise of the the Liberty IV offering is a better version of yourself. A healthy version is the best version of yourself. So, whatever that that means, um, we have you know uh, the 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 breadth of our our clientele from civilian just health fitness folks that are really dialed into the different um, IV therapies that we offer just from a from a vitamin and mineral standpoint. Um, we uh, uh, 
I, 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 I preach daily that we are a dehydrated society, whether that's um, you know, heat type stuff, workout type stuff, where we're actually doing it to ourselves, or whether it's just environment, pollution, um, the, the place that we live, the lifestyles we live. Um, there's a difference between saying the person who you know, drinks 64 ounces of water because that's the, uh, you know, their body weight and that's what the little chart says. That's great, I'm, I'm all for it, water's great. Um, but there's a cellular level that you can't replenish. Um, there's, you know, anytime somebody leaves the hospital, you know, take, the, take the pain meds out, but um, they generally feel pretty darn good. And the reason is, is because they're managing hydration and nutrition. Right. Those two things get dialed in and you're a good version of yourself um, or, or, or at least have a good platform to work from. So that's the, that's the premise of the Liberty IV offering. Um, med spas, I think, do us a, a disservice in some cases. There's some great ones out there that are doing, doing super work. Um, and uh, there are some that are out there that uh, are, are charging way too much and not putting the, the offerings out in, in any type of uh, concept or, or any type of, of hierarchy of how they're mixing things or what they're mixing with what for, for, with, with any type of scientific backing of, of why it would, would benefit. So, you know, for instance, B12 is a, uh, is, a, is a supplement that's by far always has been, probably always will be one of the leading supplements on the open market, pills, capsules, gel caps, everything. Um, somebody will take it, they'll see a, a color change of their urine, feel like oh, something's working, when that's really telling you exactly the opposite. What it's telling you is you're, you're urinating that money right into the toilet because there's something else going on while you're not uptaking that B12. Interesting. So it's the, it's the knowing that you know the B complex is the precursor or the foundation for good B12 uptake. The you know somebody who's who battles with anemia uh, has low iron, low ferritin. Um, pushing iron in the body doesn't like iron, but how about how about increasing vitamin C and your B7 biotin? Uh, uh, you, v, B, C is the, the receptor that helps you absorb more, and then the B7 to help your uh, you know your bone marrow create more red blood products, so you're carrying more oxygen. It's that that science behind it that gets missed in the right. yeah because people just see market. people just Google you know best supplements to take, and they're like oh I'll, I'll take. Like you said, vitamin B and vitamin C and vitamin D and like and then you you know you your pee smells bad and like you you know like it's like oh like it's working like yeah. you know they say about you know dark pee like lots of nutrients it's like I you know no like you're not that's not what you need right? yeah yeah, yeah. And, exactly and, and you don't know what you need unless you do blood work right and your body can tell you like hey you're lacking in this your body doesn't like this let's supplement with this right? exactly and yeah. a good assessment um you know we are a healthcare facility we are uh, we are managed by a wonderful medical doctor. Um, who oversees all of our our activities, and and that's the one thing that he preaches is assessment, assessment, assessment. You can't, no, nothing, nothing uh, will will uh, give you better information on the front end of treating a patient of just talking through what's going on and what they're feeling, what they're what they're struggling with. So, that's 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 the underpinning of Liberty IV. Before we even get into any of the kind of specialty or emerging things that, yeah, that yeah. I know really excites you more. Right. Yeah. And let's let's get into those, and you know, sure. just spend a. Um, I want to keep. I want to. Because we expand upon some of these things in other episodes, so let's keep it, you know, relatively short for each one. Sure. Um, and I'll kind of talk about my experience with, with each of these, and you can kind of talk about how they work and and, and why they work. Um, so the first one is ketamine, and specifically ketamine paired with NAD, right? So so for my life, for example, when I was going through my depression, um, I did ketamine. I had six days to do the whole treatment. It's all of the time I could afford. Um, so they put NAD and ketamine in the same bag during my drip, which was very uncomfortable, and I didn't get the experience that I got the I got the chemical um, benefits of it that I was able to you know see a couple weeks later. But the experience of ketamine itself, the first times I did it, were were very uncomfortable because I felt like I was getting kicked in the balls like Absolutely. while on this like kind of like roller coaster through space. So um, why don't you talk about kind of what ketamine does, what NAD does, the protocol sure. um, of using them both and, and why there's sp specific benefits of combining them. Absolutely. So, so ketamine is a really interesting uh, medicine that has been around. It was originally a, a uh, veterinarian medicine um, used because it's a, disassoci it's a dissociative medicine. The, the class and the action um, is, is, Somewhat anesthetic, um, somewhat analgesic, um, but it, it's it's a different it's 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 a unique class. It's taught in med school, um, and this is kind of hardcore, but it's uh, uh, essentially a chemical decapitation. 
What I mean by that is that things can be going on to you and happening to you, and you're still in a place. You're still there. You don't, um, you know, in, in the pre hosses it's a wonderful, wonderful medicine for, uh, but, but on the veterinarian side, they designed it so that they're large animals. They could operate or do large procedures without the animal laying down. So that kind of gives you a, a status. You know, you're able to cut into an equine or, or bovine uh, case, and the, the, the animal stay, stay standing. Um, so that kind of gives you a, a taste of, of, of how it works or, or, or what the result of it is. Um, in the emergency medicine world, it was a, a absolute godsend as we started to get it. Um, you know, as we come onto a scene of something that uh, is a trauma, maybe we got a pulseless extremity due to some sort of bad fracture or something on a motorcycle wreck. We're just making something up. Um, you know, if, if, if you don't get that leg back into anatomical position, give it a chance to perfuse, then you're going to lose the limb, right? And, and life and limb is, is the goal in the field, saving of. So prior to having ketamine, you, we always had the option to go ahead and, and take that patient into a sedation, paralyze, intubate, and then we, we, could, uh, we, we would have the control because you're not strong enough to fight somebody in their pain you know, reflection and, and get something straightened out like that. It's just not going to happen. Right. Ketamine came along, and now we could go in, in, in high-dose ketamine and, and dump them with the ketamine, give us a chance to have a few minutes where we're able to get that, you know, the, the, the problem fixed, corrected, and not have to worry about the intubation, which the intubation is not a problem necessarily, except that it's another resource. Now I've got to squeeze a bag every 11 seconds to breathe for you. So that's, that's the, the pre-hospital. That's, that's a really high-dose ketamine. Um, then you take it into the emergency and, and operating room um, used for, um, it's become very popular for children, um, orthopedic cases. We took a, we took a quick break. So you were talking about, you know, the kind of high dosages when you have this very traumatic event, right? And, and I think, I think another, from my research, what I've been seeing is that another, um, you know, why, why anesthesiologists love it so much and, and ER doctors is because with anesthesia, you know, you can, um, you can, if, if you give too much dosage, it could kill someone, right? And that's why anesthesiologists are, you know, some of the most um, well-paid doctors because it takes such skill and, and, and precision. With ketamine, you know, you won't kill someone, but you will send them to kind of this place called the K-hole. So can you kind of talk about that? Absolutely. And then those guys in that situation, are, are, are they're okay, you know, pushing you into the so-called K-hole um, because they're going to be supplementing with other drugs that, that take over from the, the neuro standpoint um, in the rest and peace for the, the procedures. However, in the, in the, uh, in the psychiatry world or using uh, ketamine in the, in the, in the high dose that we're talking about in an IV drip, it's a fine line. And one of the things that's really disheartening is we see more and more people starting to offer ketamine treatments, um, uh, for psychology, for psychological purposes is they, they aren't, uh, familiar with dosing, don't know what they're doing as far as um, taking you. This, the, the ketamine treatment, and I know you've had them, should be a very smooth, very um, uh, almost peaceful is a good word, experience. Um, but that's all dependent on the dosing and not letting the dosing, it's a weight-based medicine, so not letting the dosing exceed the, the body weight or the composition of the, the, uh, the patient so that you stay in this, this very narrow window between um, uh, a low dose, which is a, a perfectly uh, awake and, and, and functioning um, use of, of the drug, and then a, a little bit higher dose or the therapeutic level for the, the um, psychological um, experiences, uh, benefits at a little bit higher dose. Um, and that's one of the problems that we're seeing out there. Um, ketamine, when done correctly, is a, is a really, really nice way for somebody who's experiencing some refractive depression, um, that's not, not reacting correctly to medicines, they're just not getting relief, um, have some sort of traumas, there's, there's all, any number of things, and there's some wonderful podcasts out there that, that uh, we can refer people to, to uh, without going down that, that uh, rabbit hole right now, but um, it's, it's all about the, the, the application and, and knowing what you're doing with it, and our doctor is absolutely wonderful with he's, he's just, I've, I've, he's, Absolutely, he's done it himself. He's he's uh, um, lectured on it, teaches on it, and, and and has really really nailed it down to to good protocols. Interesting though that you mentioned the protocols with NAD, and that's the one that we're really excited about now. Without having talked about NAD prior to this, um, there, again, there's a jillion podcasts out there for it, but 
One of the things that uh, is one of the, the concerns or, or, or challenges with ketamine treatments are how long do they last? Most people that have a ketamine session um, will report anywhere from a week to maybe a month, you know, several weeks um, up to a month of benefits, of feeling the, the benefits before they wane. Um, and so we, we've, we've coined that a group out of uh, uh, Stanford that's done some great studies on there has, has coined the term, and I like it, the durability of the ketamine treatments. And what we're finding is that NAD, you mentioned that you had your ketamine and NAD in the same bag. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, that's a flawed protocol. Mm -hmm. um, the NAD is a little bit painful or dis discomfort um, with it because of the action of it. And that's the last thing that you want during that ketamine experience. Um, is to just to have that fluey, like I was getting, crampy yeah, feeling. Like I said, kicked in the balls. Kicked, yeah, 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 that's that's a common common description. Um, but we do find that the NAD with the ketamine treatments does increase the durability of it. So we have a protocol or several protocols that inter intertwine, um, where we may be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday ketamine, Tuesday, Thursday NAD for you know a, a more aggressive uh, cessation, you know, say alcohol or opioid cessation work or something that's a, a more acute trauma that we're working through. Um, and in and, and different varieties of that where we do supplement the ketamine treatments with NAD treatments. And it's, it seems to really, really help push the durability of the ketamine treatment out a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, going back to one of your earlier points, and ketamine has such, it's a sharp word, right? Like when you hear it, it feels, when I say it, it feels uncomfortable. When you hear it, it feels uncomfortable. And that's because there's this horrible connotation, right? Like people say, you know, you're taking horse trankies or, you know, everyone knows that person in college, right, that snorts a line of ketamine and then is throwing up and is in this K-hole and everyone's like, never doing that. You yeah. know, like that is, that is stupid. Illicitly referred to as special K in the, right. in yeah, the dark exactly. in the like, world. Yeah. That is when you are abusing the medication. That is when, like any medication that can be abused, right? Like, like that is, you can take too much Adderall or you can, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, Absolutely. Like you're not using it the way that it's intended to be, but what it is, as you alluded earlier, it's a dose, it's a disassociative. So when I was going through my depression, I was able to look at my negative mindset and my self-deprecating thoughts and my negative thought loops from a different angle. And I was able to see that those were not reality, right? And so that's why it's so, that's why it's so, um, so helpful for, for depression. But in my own life now, like, you know, I got off the benzodiazepine for sleep, um, which I didn't know that it was, you know, aging me and, and um, making things just so much worse in my life. But what I'm finding with ketamine is not only does it, is it increasing my sleep, which we'll talk about here in a second, but also I'm a much more, because, so for example, like if I have a conversation with someone and let's say it gets like gets um, pretty dicey, you know, it, there's a lot of emotion, anger stuff. Like if I take ketamine later that night and I reflect back on that conversation, I'm able to see it from their point of view, right? So it makes me a much more empathetic leader. I can look at problems from different angles and I can see someone's perspective of things when, you know, I can, I can have empathy for them and see their side of it when in the past I would have, you know, maybe left that conversation with um, resentment and anger. Um, so I think like there's so many, there's so many benefits for me, like in terms of like optimizing my and enhancing my performance as a leader. And, you know, I, I view all these things as tools, right? And absolutely. And, and, yeah. and let's, for the audience, let's, let's, let's unpack that just a little bit. Now, yeah. what you're referring to is low dose ketamine, right, right, which right. is available now several, um, on online, uh, uh, na nationwide online um, services are, are really uh, pushing. Um, it's lo available here lo locally with us too. It's a it's a very very low dose that's that's prepared in either a nasal spray or a, a lozenge or a trochi that, that dissolves in your mouth. And these are are you know obviously subject to abuse if you take too much. But at the at the low levels, um, it's a it's a it's a absolute. Um, you know I like to look at life. You know when we start talking about the trauma and and, and depression. Is a is a is a steep hill, almost almost like a slide or glass or metal, with very little ability to catch on. And, and a storm might be water coming down that, which makes it even harder. It's going to push you down that. And so we're looking in life. We're we're always looking for ways to increase the the stick we have to, or the or the handholds that we have to get through these things. And that's what I see the low dose ketamine. That's the way I like to look at it. Is it it gives you a little grit to that that hill of life, or it gives you a handhold or a a foot peg to to grab onto. And and like you said, how to process things better. It just gives you a little bit of time to slow down and and think in in the action of it. There's the neuroplasticity 
um, that's there. There's again, that's a rabbit hole. We we don't have time to go down now. And there's a wonderful podcast out there. But it 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 does affect you know the MDNA receptors and the GABA receptors and and um, it it does in fact increase neuroplasticity. So you are getting that repair, and that's the big big piece that we gotta we gotta nail down here. And I know you're big on it. Is these damaged things that have happened, you know, we, we compare it to a rotator cuff uh, comparing, you know, multiple concussions. Well, that rotator cuff can get repaired, right? There's four muscles that make that ring and they can go and tech what they need to and fix what they need to. Same thing. We can fix, we can fix through different modalities, we can fix the problems or the injuries that have happened uh, with concussions and, and traumatic brain injuries. Sometimes they're very severe and you have deficits that, you know, the, the brain is a, a marvelous, marvelous and fascinating complex you know, uh, uh, organ. But that's the thing that I really want people to start to dial in on is the, the repairs or, or the damage is not permanent. Right. Um, in many cases, sometimes, yeah. you know, but, but, but the, the stuff we're talking about doesn't have to be permanent. Yeah. And ketamine's a great tool as we start talking through um, some of that repair. Um, 100%, man. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, again, going back to the, um, you and I had this conversation because it's not, so it's not like other, um, pharmaceutical drugs or alcohol or other like hard drugs like cocaine and um, these things where it's like, you know, um, there's not, there's, there can be abuse and there can be this kind of addiction kind of habit forming, like you're kind of striving for more of it. But I think the benefit of ketamine is that once you stop it, like you're not, there's not going to be a, a, an inpatient, um, you know, uh, withdrawal process for ketamine. Exactly. And uh, benzodiazepine, opioids, all, you know, alcohol, all have very similar detox processes for the, the chronic uh, user, and, and they're painful. They're very, very dangerous, quite frankly, very yeah. dangerous and need to be managed by medical professionals. Right. Um, and, and ketamine does not have those traits. Now, there is some question in the medical community about um, dependency from a, a habit forming, but, you know, we, we joke around, so are, you know, a good hamburger, and, and, and I'm madly addicted to a, a beautiful blonde that I call my wife. Right. Um, you know, that's a habit, too. So right, right. be careful when we say habits, you know, No, of course, exactly, yeah, and I think that's, that's what people need to understand, like, like, so for me, for example, in my own life, um, and, you know, we can kind of talk about the sleep thing, but I have an addictive personality, right? So, so one of the things I have to look out for is like, I'm not chasing the dragon of like, you know, more ketamine, more ketamine, more ketamine. But if you use it, I use it very, you know, strategically for when I need to think about a certain situation or, you know, um, specifically for sleep. And I think, you know, you and I had a conversation that ketamine, what we're finding in the, in the early studies is that it's increasing sleep by 30%. But as we kind of talked about earlier, um, and you know, how, how long is the half-life for ketamine? Uh, about 90 minutes. Right, so compared to other drugs, which can get up to like 48 to 72 hours, right? Exactly. Like so, so it's out of your system in 90 minutes, but what it allows to do for me, it just allows me to fall asleep. I have ADHD, I'm a high performer, my, my problem will always be sleep and getting to bed because I can't shut my mind off, right? I've tried everything. Um, ketamine allows you to to do that, but then nine, in 90 minutes, it's out of your system. So where many people are like, you know, ketamine's a miracle drug for sleep because it increases REM sleep. It actually doesn't. It just, right. it just allows you to go to bed and then you're getting sober sleep. That's which, correct. Which and is it's the, so important yeah. that you set the environment. So, you know, to, to fall asleep with a, with a half a ketamine trochi at a 50 milligram and have a TV going with the blue light and all that, that's just, uh, you know, pissing in the wind. Right. You, you, you really have to set the environment and then use the 50 milligram trochi to allow you to, like you said, overcome the, the wandering mind, the, the, you know, it seems like the alligators that uh, chomp at your, you know, elbows and ass are always a little bit stronger and with a little bit better bite right. when you're alone and at night. So if it gives you that chance to get to sleep, it's a tool, set that environment yeah, right. to where then you can get into that REM sleep and even stage four deeper. And I've done this in my own life. Like, like there's been nights where I have horrible sleep when I take ketamine because before that I allow my mind to wander and then I'm thinking about these complex problems from different angles and like that's not the intention that you need to set before taking this medication if you want to use it for sleep, right? Those are two completely different circumstances. And I've been like, where in the past, like, you know, if you take an Ativan or a Xanax to go to bed, like, like regardless of what your intentions are, it's going to knock you out. With ketamine, you know, like you said, you have to still have great sleep hygiene. But for someone like me, great sleep hygiene isn't enough to 
allow me to fall asleep when I want to. And then ketamine is that thing that kind of pushes me over the edge. Absolutely. And then without the fog of the morning, you exactly. Know, even I wake up so energized. Like yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's awesome. And again, we're not telling people to go take ketamine without the consultation of your doctor. No, this is a, phy a physician, and and that's a great point. And one of the things that I want to kind of pull out of this is and, and highlight really quickly, ketamine is a drug. It is a medicine. It's prescribed by a doctor. It's it's uh, it's managed like like a, any other prescription, um, and it's it's not a psychedelic. A lot of people will kind of categorize it in with uh, some of the other you know psilocybin and some of the other uh, plant medicines that are wonderful, wonderful medicines. Um, and and uh, we talk about them. I'm just super excited about all those. But yeah. ketamine is a is a is a is a physician guided treatment. It's just another tool in the toolbox that when used correctly, it's it's showing some really, really promising. Yeah, benefits. and I think I, I wanted to touch on psilocybin. We have other episodes in the psychedelic series, so people can go back and learn about that more. And you know, I think we'll we'll have a part two sometime here soon with with Mike. I'd really the purpose of the Kenneth the ketamine thing is there's I've talked to people and they're like, Oh, like you're addicted to ketamine, bro. Like, oh, like the K-hole, bro. It's like, no, like, 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 but there's just hor the people don't know any better, right? And they see that friend that snorts it and um, then Ignorance it just ruins bliss. The, yeah, exactly, man. It's like, it's like, for me, it's been such an amazing tool in my life. Like I think that paired with contrast therapy and obviously, you know, having a faith being more, being the center of my life now, like these are all different things that have leveled me up. But like ketamine is one of those things. Um, yeah. and, but one of yeah. the things about ketamine too, is it's such a, with the, the benefit that we see therapeutically or, or clinically in the therapeutic, uh, advantages, we see immediate results. So the guy, uh, you know, I, I've recently worked uh, with with somebody who their their world changed on May 6th when uh, the the uh, unfortunately the, the shootings that occurred here in Allen at the Allen Outlet Malls, uh, one of the one of our clients was just they're shopping with their with their family and witnessed three children all under the age you know three eight and eleven or three nine and eleven witnessed them killed and and it has the same product uh, you know same results as as uh, military guys it's the PTSD, it's the PTSD yeah. it's the survivor guilt all the same same package and it literally changes life um, and re totally refractive to all the 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 work that his psychiatrist was trying to help him through with um, save for. We got to the ke the point of ketamine and and have the did the treatment and you know you, you have somebody send you a text that night saying hey this is the first time I've had a a good day since May six and I tell you what that's uh it's the best that's the best feeling you best, can ever get there's best. no paycheck that, that exactly yeah. man so we, we so we have to we have to challenge the stigma associated with some of these emerging therapies that have gotten absolutely that have a stigma I, I wish we could have a different name I wish there was another name that came out on ketamine literally like you know? we actually need to change the name because like when someone hears it they just immediately their brain shuts off and they're absolutely. like it's an offensive term etc so absolutely. um let's skip let's skip psilocybin for sure. now and let's kind of talk about um you know we'll end the conversation I think with uh, your work with peptides, I think that's very interesting. Um, you know, things like things like people again, people hear SARMs and they're like, think of the high school kid, right, who's who's like, you know, just ripping SARMs or whatever it is. So, can we talk about an educated perspective of what peptides are and, and the benefits of them? So, peptides, just let's pull the curtain back on it. Peptides, a fancy way of saying amino acid. Amino acid is a fancy way of saying a short program protein. So. You know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we had the big baseball blow up. The, you know, without without throwing names out there, the the steroid problem in sports, and uh, these these were these were anabolic steroids. These were putting the the hormones, the manufactured synthetically manufactured hormones, into the body to to do the work of 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 the the, the hormones that the body normally makes themselves through you know the hypothalamus and and pituitary functions. When you start talking about peptides, SARMs. Um, this is a, a synthetic, a SARM is just a synthetic peptide. So it's, it's science has mapped now the, 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 uh, the protein code to precurse your body to make whatever hormone you're, you, you know, that, that it's specifically aimed at. So there's a wide array of SARMs and harms that are out. And there's probably, if you, I'm just going to general numbers, if there's 45 out there that are kind of in the research world, there's six or seven that have percolated to the point where um, they're available through compounding pharmacies, which is very important. Folks, don't buy these peptides off the internet. When they say it's 99% pure, what that means is it's not pure. 
<laughs> so the one percent is is all you you know that's not better than ninety eight. That's still right. not pure. It's yeah, not right. something you want to put in your body. Um, they are research still uh, uh, compounds. There there are a few of them though that have been um, used enough now at this point, and and there are enough studies on them that they're starting to become mainstay. And, and our compounding pharmacies are are offering them. Um, and, and what this is, just, just generally stated, is it's a way to put a, a, an amino acid or, or protein into the body that tells the body specifically what we expect or what we would like it to do for us. So in the instance of, a, uh, of, of poor gut health, you know, a BPC-157 is, uh, is a peptide that will increase uh, through the pituitary gland and, and, and the action of the hypothalamus will increase the production of... Uh, the, the right enzymes to to trigger off the the actin cascade, so repairing that internal tissue and and going after and it's agnostic to wherever it is in the body, whatever injury. So you might be treating a a sore elbow and 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 not realize that you've got a gut issue that's going to fix. So they're 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 very wide array of 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 precursors to the different um, hormones that our bodies make themselves. So it's asking your body, hey, let's let's re uh, let's re-engage and make make those levels back up. Maybe recover to where they were younger. Um, in, in the case of like human growth hormones, and there's several different ones. We won't go down that pipeline, but um, it's it's that's that's the overall uh, concept of what peptides, harms, and SARMs are. are. So um, I, I recommend people do their research. There's some wonderful uh, stuff out there. Um, Everybody's got their own appetite on how much of the, the guinea pig and, and uh, test dummy that they're willing to be on their own. Um, and and I, I just recommend really st stay to the stuff where there's, there's a lot more studies or, or get, get with somebody who knows what they're talking about um, to, to help you guide through that space. But it's a very, very interesting and emerging space that's coming at us like a rocket ship. And what I really like about it is right now it's not uh, a, a big pharma play. So right, yeah. that makes it, you know, a couple of things that makes it affordable, accessible, mm -hmm. um, and you know we, we already picked on the VA enough. We don't want to be Debbie Downer. We'll, we'll stay off of Big Pharma today, yeah, but right. um, it, it's a major problem in the United States. Um, and, and as these things become more popular, I imagine that some of these companies are going to try to look for angles where they can oh, put a delayed and, yeah, right, reaction yeah, yeah, on yeah, them, yeah, and they're going to yeah. they're gonna try to monetize off it. But again, absolutely, we won't, we won't go down that, that that rabbit hole. And I think you know, in my own life, like, and kind of how we talked about before this, um, like you know, something that is when you are putting, let's say, let's use steroids versus um, SARMs, for an example. And again, I'm not, I'm not as educated on this as you are, but just from kind of the way that I understand it is, you know, it's where steroids is that you are putting a synthetic, you are putting a synthetic steroids into your body. Um, SARMs kind you're of- Putting a hormone into your yeah, body. Yeah, sorry, yeah, you're putting, you're putting a hormone into your body that, that is not a part of your genetic makeup, whereas some of these modalities like SARMs and peptides um, if used correctly, again, with, with um, professional supervision, like they can allow your body to begin to create this stuff naturally, which is how God intended it to be. Exactly. That's, that's exactly right. Cool. And, and, and understand, they still are synthetic in many cases. There's yep. some natural, some synthetic, but um, you're exactly right. You're, asking, you're, 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 you're tri tripping the body back into production of something that's natural within the body without putting in, you know, you, if you put an anabolic steroid in, your body is not going to make testosterone. Right. And then that's why people have post-cycle withdrawal exactly. stuff. Exactly. You've got to manage then, estrogen, right, you've got you kidney failure, keep... all that stuff to worry about. Exactly. Um, Last episode, came, last episode, we talked about uh, Liver King, and the neuroscientists had no idea who he was, which is kind of hilarious. But <laughs> he's back on steroids now, right? Because he was trying to, again, the things that he used that that I think all of society should use, right? Organ meat and and sun and you know um, grounding and sunlight, right? And sunning your balls, whatever it is, right? Like like the things that he talked about are actually proven and very very um, beneficial, and like you can become a very optimized human through that but he was taking roids and no matter how optimized your body is through natural things, if you start putting unnatural things into them and then take that away, like any addiction, right? You're going to have side effects, Absolutely. right? And so now he's just announced that he's going back onto steroids because you can't, he's losing hair and he looks like shit. Like you can't inject that much testosterone and unnatural things into your body and then yep. expect to take it away and be fine. It doesn't he, work like that. He's trapped himself into a, a and, and ultimately there will probably be some long-term consequences that are uh, extremely serious, possibly fatal. You know, you, you're increasing your risk of prostate cancers. And, um, you know, when, when, when you get your hormonal imbalances are a very, very dangerous thing. 
Um, when we've saw the, you know, especially in youngsters when the, when the brain is still forming and get, again, the neuroplasticity of it. Um, my advice is anything that's, uh, it, you know, anybody under 25 years old, 23 years old as a male, yeah. just be very careful and, and make sure you're it's working with needed. a professional. Yeah, right. Like I, I wish that I, like, you know, I started, I, I don't smoke weed anymore, but when I was 18, I started smoking pot, right? Like, I, I wish I, I wish I new because like now marijuana if used like you know for again a season of life or you know to manage your stress and anxiety mm -hmm. or pain management like like again it's I it the most ideal situation is you don't have to use something but you know we're, we're broken humans but it's a useful plant medicine exactly right but yes. you know when you're 18 years old and you're smoking pot and abusing it then like you have these um you can have you know negative side effects and consequences later in life so you know it's just um again there's a lot of you know there's the, the devil keeps you in shame so don't go back and look at your life and you know start to regret things like you know, you can focus on what you do today, um, and that'll make you a better person tomorrow. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, um, you, you, the, it, it all goes back. Like for for instance, alcohol. I mean, what you you can't go to a ball game or anything without just being thrown in your face. And right. and if I preached anything to to our youngsters, is abstain from alcohol. I mean, it's I'd so much rather see somebody smoking a joint yeah. than 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 drinking a mixed drink or, or or getting intoxicated. You know, over over limits on alcohol because there's so many bad right. side effects yeah, exactly. of it. But that's the, the society that we're in. It's you know not reality. So yeah, it's just a. a, a you know, one of those things we'll, we'll continue to, to butt our heads against. But yeah. um, I think we're going in the right direction. I think that, that some of this is starting to change, and that's what I, I really appreciate. You know, even getting out of the medicines and the holistic approach that you guys are taking, the cold therapy, you know, um, that's not easy. It's not easy to get into a cold tub. Very hard. And yeah. When somebody finally says, you know, hey, I'll take that dip, and then they experience the endorphin release and see what the circulation increases and what that feels like in perfusion and oxygenation throughout the body, um, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's it really absolutely is. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So yeah, it's, and it's, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a combination of right answers out there in, yeah. in moderation and, 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 and making sure that you uh, don't, don't, Google the, don't Google your answers, get your information, do your, do your, do your due diligence, find people that, that are willing to work with you and help you, you know, make those decisions and, and get on a healthy path with the, these you know, options, more options. Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, and with, with mental health and with, you know, becoming the person that you want to be, I think people need to understand, like, like God intended the reward path. God created the, the reward pathway to be hard, right? You have to do hard things, put in the work, get into uncomfortable situations in order to grow, right? Absolutely. It says this in the Bible, and that's, and you see that with, with neuroscience, right? It proves that, where, you know, where everyone in society nowadays wants this magical pill that's going to fix their depression. It's called an antidepressant, like, like it doesn't work that way, you know. Yeah. Like, like, sure. Again, it can be. And Benny's again barking to. Yeah, to, Benny uh, likes that. Uh, yeah. that answer. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's want us to wrap up, but put in the hard work. You can do it, um, but understand that you know going through mental challenges, um, mental health, depression, anxiety, like this will be the hardest fight of your life. But when you utilize these tools that we'll be having here at the Brain Optimization Lab in Dallas, and then we will hopefully expand this model across the country to help you know millions of lives and kind of help change the system. Um, just understand that it, that it won't be easy. And we, Absolutely. we have to say that up front. So yep. Mike, appreciate you, man. Appreciate all the you lives bet. that you save and um, super, for, super looking forward to this conversation, helping a lot of people. You bet. Keep up all the work you're doing, man. It's, it's going to work. It's, 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 a, it's an effort that's going to take a whole lot of us. It's, a, it's not just a... Uh, uh, availability, but it's an access piece. Um, we've got to we've got to continue to work on um, one of the things that we're really focused on is keeping price under control. This has got to be offerings that we can get to people, um, and and so it's it's going to be a team approach. But I think we've definitely got the ball rolling, and, and look forward to keeping this momentum going with the the, the tribe. Yes, sir. Awesome.